Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Swiss-based jazz drummer and composer Aaron Dolman. He talked to us about his new 2022 CD, Are You Here to Help? The striking debut album of this trio is raw and exuberant. It's a force that one might associate with a diverse style of instrumentation. It's an elusive sound world using a diverse array of vocal and percussive qualities. We discuss this new album, COVID Life, and the future. We originally interviewed him back in 2019 prior to the pandemic, so it was quite a conversation this time around. Enjoy. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. How are you? I'm doing great, yeah. Thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to me. It's nice to, to reconnect. Yeah, Aaron, absolutely. Thank you for reaching out, and I look forward to talking to you about the new album. Oh. So I have had the chance to interview um, a lot of folks on this new album, Are You Here to Help? And it's coming out March 18th, and you know it's rather triumphant because everything kind of shut down two years ago. So talk to me a little bit about this release and how it feels to have it come out now with the chance to hopefully promote it live shows all that good stuff yeah it's definitely triumphant's a good a good word crazy is another word uh, yeah we the first time I, I i worked with this this group so the group is is a bit of a strange trio it's me on drums and um two singers right so and they both improvise and they're really wonderful sarah and eugenie the first time the three of us played was a friend. He said, "Hey, you want to open for us?" Right before the, the pandemic, so like you know, like the the end of the year, 2019 or something. And I just thought, man, what's like the weirdest group I could put together mm. for this show? Let's see what happens. It was just like right away this wonderful experience for all three of us. I thought, like, um, yeah, I mean, you get rid of the harmony and, and all this stuff in the middle, and you're left with just the basics. So there was something really special about that and fun, which I think is really important too. Like it was just exciting for us. Like, wow, okay, this is cool. We're onto some cool sound. Let's let's explore. And then nothing for like two years and everything shut down. And that was just like, okay, <laughs> I guess we'll wait, you know? And then about a year later, I got luckily a grant from the Canada Council, which, which is really amazing arts funding. And we were able to put this record together. And I said, okay, well, we got... We got some money. Let's do it. I've been writing the music. If, if the two of them are down to still play, so we got back together, and that was like mid-pandemic. So that was kind of crazy. Every step of the way has been like this really wild experience of like, are we really doing this right now? <laughs> like, mm. cool, we're lucky, but it's it's weird. You know, and I guess during this pandemic, you know, we've learned a lot. We've been in quarantine. We've been, you know, kind of away from people. What did you learn about yourself over this pandemic that is going to make you stronger as you reemerge and promote this album and play live? Good question. I think space, like just the beauty of space. Sometimes it's hard, but other times it's what you need and kind of feeling the difference between the two. Like when do you need to take some space for yourself and when do you need to give space for others and say, okay, you know what, like I need to invite people into my space right now because there's too much space, you know? And it comes under the music too. Like we kept saying that when we were writing it and we were rehearsing and everything, we're like, okay, let's just do less. Let's leave even more space, more room for like, a breath more room for like some silence because we kind of all needed it you know and that became like the kind of common theme is like okay where can we put even more space in the music and and in life too like okay where can i make more space for the for people and and things that really make me feel loved and safe you know and, and how do i give that to other people too before we depart this album what are you hoping the listener gets from this experience i mean i know you know, you were, it was kind of an experimental nature and there was a lot going on, but what do you hope they get from it? I mean, I guess ultimately some sort of, like, kindness, peace, like a, a, bit, a bit of the calmness that it gave me to be able to work on music in the midst of everything and just say, okay, you know, people are still making art, I still get to do it with my friends, and, I, and hopefully people will listen to it. So some, some essence of that, like, peace and calmness, and like, okay, they're still still people doing stuff you know in the in, in the arts and for each other yeah just that the the same love that i tried to put in it you know for everyone else to kind of deepen that question let's say you come to kansas city you perform this album live and you have to kind of yeah. promote it and get people into the seats how would you promote and describe the way that you would present this live the way I see it, it's, about, it's, it's, it's still as experimental as it is and as weird as it sounds to say, oh yeah, it's just drums and voices in it. It's still 
songs. You know, I went back to like the music that I love to listen to and I still do. Like my whole life has always been folk music. Like I was with Cotton and Mabel Carter and all that. And it was just, okay, we're going to write songs. They have lyrics. They tell a story. Sometimes it's a little ambiguous, but ultimately they're, the, they're songs you already know. And maybe in a, in a bit of an environment where you go, okay, you know, I'm going in a different way. I'm taking a different type of mode of transportation, but I'm still getting to the song. What's the story here, you know? You know, now that things, hopefully we're on the other side of all of this and we start getting back to things in our life that we've been missing for the last couple of years, what what do you what have yeah. you missed the most that you're looking forward to getting back to? Seeing music live. Li- I mean, the short answer is live music. The, lo- the slightly longer answer is playing music for people and also having people play music for me and being a part of that ecosystem again. As a part of that ecosystem, what are you hoping we all realize? Because ultimately, the world of live music has been held back more than anybody else. You know, I mean, sports have come back, different things have come back, but it's like live performance has been something that has been one of the, one of the last things on the list. So as we do get back in earnest, what do you hope we all, both musician and the audience, realizes about the true power of live music? Yeah, that's a deep question. I think that it brings people together. There's many ways to bring people together, but music can do it in a in a way that very few other communal gatherings can do. Like, it immediately brings people together in a, in a space of like, okay, we're safe, we're feeling good, we're feeling love. There's just like joy. And I think that there's, there, there's so much value in that. Like just the, the value of community and being together and experiencing something that's just like, it's just trying to bring happiness, you know? And that's kind of amazing. Just, just that. We're just trying to, bring joy together indeed yeah again Aaron thank you for opening thank you for getting in touch opening up in the music I really appreciate it and I'm looking forward to playing it on the show oh man thank you for for, um, for your support and, and making the space for me to talk about it that's always nice especially after all this time oh man it's, it's fun just to, yeah get it back in this headspace of like okay music, music yeah happening. let's talk about it let's do it Totally. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Chess interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Basel, Switzerland, Montreal, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Aaron for his time, music, and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Are you here to help? Neon Jazz.